Hey everybody, welcome to Garden Sound 365. This is the show where we write music every day for a year. I'm okay. I know yesterday was kind of a shock for some people, but don't worry, I'm fine. No harm was done to me in yesterday's video. Big shout out to my buddy George for coming over and taking over the show yesterday. If you missed it, it was a lot of fun. Of course, that'll be at the very end of the video on the end card where you can click on yesterday's episode and take a look at that. So there are basically three episodes left before I start doing some special episodes. And there's a couple things we need to go over very quickly. Um, I'm not putting a skip card here because I really want everybody to watch this. I need you all to help me figure out what songs to put on my best of Garden Sound 365 compilation that I'll be releasing at the the end of the series along with of course the final volume of 365 that I released my website I really need to know which songs you all think were the best so in the description down below there's a form you click that it'll ask you for the song name and it'll also ask you for the link to the song that you think is your favorite of the whole series so do me a favor big time and take a look at that form and put your favorite song in there. Tomorrow is the last coffee time of Garden Sound 365. There will not be a coffee time next Friday. So if you want to submit something for coffee time, this is your last chance for season one. Go ahead and do that for me on Reddit or via Discord. We've gained a lot of subscribers over the past couple of days and I want to just remind everybody why we're here. A year ago, I set out to make a show that would capture my mood and my emotion and my music writing daily for an entire year. And that that's why we're here and it's evolved into something greater than that it's evolved into something that is now more or less a YouTube show where I demonstrate how to make different styles of music and talk about composition it's, it's blossomed into something that I never thought it would it would be um, and, and that's a good thing I'm having a great time making this now and I'm actually getting to the point where I'm enjoying the grind if that makes sense which is a big deal if you don't follow the show I struggle with um, you know being okay with my station in life. There are two or three more artists that I want to touch on for the for the remainder of the series here. And one of those is Bass Nectar. Now I've wanted to do Bass Nectar for the entire series, but I needed my chops to be up because oh my god, Bass Nectar's fan base. With Bass Nectar fans, you've just got to be sensitive to the fact that he has so many fans. I mean, this guy constantly sells out arenas, stadiums. I mean, it's, it's, he's a big deal, especially in the EDM scene and in the, uh, you know, culture of electronic music. He's like the dude. So today we're going to dive into why. Why is Bass Nectar what he is? How does his formula work? And how can we make music that sounds like him? Okay, so on this show, when I do a how to make or a recomposed, I try to make something that is exactly the same as another song. I'm not going to do that today because really there are two or three different styles that Bass Nectar uses to create his songs. Really it kind of revolves around one particular drum pattern and a specific palette of sounds. The form of these songs is all relatively the same. So what I've done here is I've picked five. Either A, they're, they're the most popular ones that pulled up on YouTube when I searched Bass Nectar, or B, they're some of my personal favorites. I've got to throw that in there. It's my show. What we're listening for here is the approximate form. I did this with Ratatat a couple of months ago. And what we're, what we're just kind of listening for is when do things change, at what rate do they change, that kind of thing. What you've got is an introductory part that basically states the harmonic and melodic structure and rhythm. And it's just reserved for here's what the chords are going to do the whole time, here's what the me melody is going to be revolving around the whole time. The next thing you have is an introduction of either a vocal hook, which is a repeated phrase, or some sort of lyrics, right? In the in the event of Va Va Boom when he that he did with uh, Lupe Fiasco. Then there's two ways he goes with this. He either does a build up like a you know where you spin it up and and you have a riser and you get people's excitement going, or he goes straight into the false drop. All right. In the event of bass head, think about that song. It's got like a false drop. And stage four, the actual drop. It's gonna repeat at the point where the vocal hook comes in and then drop again. Bass Nectar, he's got a formula. So, using that formula, I'm gonna make a Bass Nectar track. So the first thing we need in a good Bass Nectar track are drum samples. Now we're gonna be using mostly what I call 808 drum samples. Now these aren't specifically from the Roland 808, but they're made to sound like it. It's got a very distinct sound. These are the kind of drums he uses. So we're gonna be using that type of drums. We're gonna be using heavy bass, a little bit of distortion on our subs and bass noises to make them grimy. We're gonna be using a vocal chop, and we're going to be using really exciting percussion. I'll get into that later, it's really important. We're going to be using a four-stage formula, introduction of harmonic and melodic rhythm, introduction of a vocal hook, build up, drop. That's it. Here we go. 
That's a pun because he has a song called Here We Go. All right, let's, just, let's go. Now, in pretty much all of these bass nectar songs, there's a signature rhythm, and it sounds like this. That's the bass nectar rhythm. I like that. I wonder if we can modulate this. Okay, I like that. Now what we're gonna do is pull in a bass sound. What he does to vary things up is he changes his bass line without changing the melody, and that sounds like this. So the melody layer I'm hearing is kind of a um, like a G Easy kind of Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre synth from the West Coast, like. We need some sort of a background kind of high-pitched effect. I'm gonna get a track from the Virus. This thing makes some really cool high-pitched noises. Um, and let's pass some MIDI through it and see if we can see if we can get something gnarly to come out. Alright, now we need like a vocal hook. How about these? This is pretty cool. Now this sounds a little bit strange and what we're going to do is actually process these a little bit, which is what he would do. So we're going to process these with a little bit of supercharger. Um, just It's just compression. Um, it's a nice vocal compression though. So I'm going to give this a bit of vocal compression, turn the uh, output up to like 2, and I'm going to stick some reverb on here. Um, <clears throat> but I want these six second reverbs so it sounds really spacey. All right, so there we go. We've got our first two sections done. Now let's build our build up, um, then our drop, and then we're gonna add some exciting percussion, mix things down a bit, and then we're done. So our build up here is gonna be about half the size of our actual, um, you know, what I would call the verse. Every four beats, it's gonna increase in speed. We're gonna, you know, of course, flesh this out a bit and add some effects. We'll come back to that. Right now, I'm just trying to get the form laid out. I'm gonna make this a little bit more brutal by adding some Saturn onto it just to compress things and make them gnarly. Right, so our basis track is gonna get sidechained from the kick. Let's add some more percussion and some effects. We're gonna need a clap. Now the thing about bass nectar you need to consider is that he's constantly building excitement. Excitement builds the whole time. Something new is happening. Something old is going away. The whole time. I've added some automation to the filter on this hover pad to make it a little bit more gnarly and now I have to do a bit of work in the MIDI. So I got distracted here. Give me a second. We gotta wrap this up here. That's the, that's the drawback of producing an episode a day. I don't ever get to do these. Is, thoroughly as I would like. Alright, now we need a reverse clap, and then we need some exciting cymbals, and then we need a ride cymbal. There's a ride cymbal under every single bass nectar drop that's going and it's very important, and if it's not there, it doesn't sound right. So make sure you put that in here. I just put it in here and listen to it. Alright, now I'm going to throw in a couple extra samples and a little bit like a riser, maybe a little bit of white noise sweeps and we're done. So let me do that here with a time lapse and I'll come back to you when I'm done.
All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for me today. If you appreciate what I do here on the show, if you like what I do here, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Otherwise, I will be giving this project away to my supporters on Patreon. It's only $2 a month, plus all sorts of great rewards if you're into that sort of thing. Don't forget to vote for your favorite song of 365 in the description below, and don't forget to submit your stuff for coffee time. But as always, my name's Gardner. I'll see y'all tomorrow for coffee time. Oh.